Hello and welcome to This Is. Today, Jimmy, we have some weird Chinese emulators. Yes, we do. So I've been trying to get into this game for a little while now, and the very first one that I've actually bought was this. So you bought this with your own money? Yes. Ken could learn a thing or two from you. Right, it's, it's bad. So you could get these emulators from anywhere. You can get them. This one's called the Pocket Go. It's made by Retro Mimi. How much is this? This one is only $40, which is why it's the oh. main. This is the one that people go for when they look for emulators. It comes shipped with uh, uh, ROMs on it. It has its own emulators. Uh, but they ship it with ROMs? Yes, they ship it with a lot of good ROMs. Like, I don't want to say which, but if you want a game for Super Nintendo NES, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, it's probably on there already. Okay. The issue is, the first one I ordered never came. Wait, you spent $40 and it just never showed up? Yes, so it was like a whole ordeal. They're already shipping the first one from China. I bought it directly from Retro Mimi. Right. And it gives you a tracking number and everything like that, but Customs just decided that it was theirs. So it's I- almost nefarious somehow. Right, say. it was very nefarious. So I hit up Retro Mimi and they were like, I made it to customs, like our hands are clean. I was like, okay. They're on Amazon now, Prime. So and just buy them on Amazon. Right, buy it on Prime. It's also cheaper, it's $35. I literally got it the next day. This one is entry level for a reason. It does look, I think, the best out of all the different options you can get. Okay, so we have Amiga, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, NES, and- There's multiple emulators for some of them because out of the box, this one needs an update. They all need updates out of the box, which so is not easy to do. I'm assuming you just load it up on the micro SD. Yes, but you have to flash it. So there are multiple programs involved. Mm. There's one website where you get them all. You just, yeah. it's a very simple download. And once you watch, there's one YouTuber uh, who's really good. And once you watch his video, it's pretty simple for all of them. But I had to do that. And that wipes all of the ROMs off of it. So this one, not working too great. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm feeling great right now. Uh, Try the old power off, power on trick. Yeah, the good old <laughs> classic. You'll, you'll see why I dumped this one pretty quick. I okay. used it for about a day and was like, cool concept, pretty bad execution. I mean, for 35 bucks, if it plays games somewhat decently, I do like the size of this. Yes. Like, I don't want something huge. It looks and like a Nintendo. Like, it's kind of a good mix between Super Nintendo and Game Boy. We've got Super Mario World, one of the best games ever made. And one of the best title screens ever. That's title screens good. ever. Oh, dude, this screen is actually really nice. Right, it's sized right. It's got a decent resolution for that size. It's 2.4 inches, it's 320 by 240. I mean, it's a Game Boy size right. screen, but it's an actual L uh, LCD, like an, I mean, that looks IPS, it's nice and sharp. So this will not do like uh, PlayStation. It has the ability to do PlayStation games. It just, they just don't work right. Like they're very choppy, very low frame rate. It's not Got worth it. it. And that's kind of what made me start investigating other options, which we will look at soon. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I'm dropping frames right now. Yeah, Super Nintendo, it drops a few frames. Game Boy Advance, ironically, is the one it runs best if you can get the games to start. And the sound's a little off, I can tell, having played this game thousands of times. Sounds a little off. It's okay, it's a very okay experience. But the size of that screen, it looks really sharp. It is incredibly sharp. So that's one of the things I'll definitely give this, is that it's a nice small console, but the screen, especially when you say $35, the screen is way better than I would expect. Right. Far better than any kind of Game Boy that you will be able to get. Um, maybe some slight technical difficulties right. with it working and running smoothly, but, I heard that you have another console for me to try. Yeah, that, this one for sure though, you can get working right. I yeah, just gave up on it really quickly because it wasn't doing what I wanted to do. At 35 bucks, I'll put some time into getting this thing sort of, you know, settled and exactly. properly sorted and everything. Okay. So, but the cream of the crop, the next one we've got to look at, this is the Ooh. Ann Burnick RG350. Oh, this is the same thing that we looked at on Mystery Tech. Right. Although this one, it's a black and orange. That's actually. Yeah. This is the default color. Okay, I like it. It's did you get it because of Halloween colors? Yeah, yeah. It's the default color though, so you know. Oh, those sticks feel good. Yes, it has dual analog sticks. It has Ooh. a glass screen, USB C, and HDMI. This guy only has like a little AV like headphone style jack right. for RCA. The HDMI is not active. It just doesn't do anything. It's it it works theoretically, like the hardware level it works, but they haven't activated it yet. 
there is a very good community of home brewers for this device. Again, you have to flash the software or firmware to sure. the device, but this one uses an internal SD card for uh, firmware yeah. and an external one for ROMs. The built-in emulators for this device run great. They're optimized super well. Uh, the screen looks great. And the biggest draw for a lot of people, besides the fact that it has two triggers, or four triggers in total and dual analog sticks is the fact that it can run PS1 games almost perfectly. There we go, so that's the thing. So yeah. I have wanted, since they really made the first NES classic, I've wanted a Game Boy classic. Right? right. I would love something like that. And this seems like the closest to really giving me that full experience yep. that also can run PlayStation games. Because realistically, if I'm running an emulator, I'm running PlayStation 1 games, and I'm running Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games. Yeah, so this is the same resolution as the Pocket Go. It's just a little bit bigger. This one, I, I genuinely love. I play it a lot. So yeah, this is the custom, or is this the PS1 Doom? No, this is Game Boy Advance SP, oh, or yeah, Game Boy Advance Doom. It actually runs surprisingly smoothly. Like That looks like 60 FPS, or at least close to it. I've done a lot of testing on this thing. Uh, all the emulators have the ability to put the frame rate on screen. It's 60 locked, 99% the time the only emulator it doesn't really work well with though is n64 none of these things n64 have been able to figure it out all right what else do we have so, on, so how do i exit do uh, I just, there's is there a, a reset, reset button hit the like tap the power button if you want it so you can oh. reset the whole console with reset that's kind of an inelegant way to do it all of the emulators if you just tap the power button you can quit them through the emulator menu it's really good about once you're in an emulator you can go through the whole file structure of the device so even if you accidentally saved metal gear solid one in your game boy advance folder you can go find it and that's activate cool. it that way i will say the screen actually seems to be a little bit lower quality than on this guy right because of the same resolution it's bigger and also seems a little less contrasty mm -hmm. like this one i felt like got a little bit brighter and a little bit more it was a little bit more contrasty this I seems agree. like a little bit more of how much is this guy oh yeah we didn't talk about that this one's a little steeper it's about 100 bucks 70 bucks if you want to order it from china to be mm. fair 100 bucks prime shipping on amazon for right. for what you get here though a device that can play all game yeah. boy advance games all game boy color anything you really want except n64 it's, I feel like, worth it. Another option for running PS1 games, though, is the PS Vita. I brought mine in. I have Metal Gear Solid on it. It's a very tough process to get Metal Gear Solid on this thing. You actually have to have a PS3. You need the PS1 Classic on your PS3. Wait, wait, sorry, hang on. Say that again? You have to, so you load it up from the PS3 side yes. <laughs> and transfer it to Vita? Just for Metal Gear Solid 1. Also, PS Vita, as good as it is for emulating PSP and PS1, doesn't have any of the Crash Bandicoot games or any of the Tony Hawk games. And the other thing with the Vita is that if you have one, obviously great, but you right. can't get these things cheap anymore. They're actually fairly expensive, To get a right? Vita 2 used, it's about the same price, oh, 100 okay. bucks and you usually get a memory card with it. Again, doesn't use an SD card. Since you're a specs guy, real quick, this one has 500 megahertz about a single core CPU. Oh, so that's why it can only run like SNES kind yeah. of poorly. And it has 32 megabytes of RAM. Megabytes? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, 35 bucks though. 35 yeah, bucks 35 though. bucks. Okay. You pay 100, you get a one gigahertz dual core processor. Which is why you can play uh, Super Nintendo yes. as well as PlayStation and everything. And okay. you get a uh, half a gig of RAM, 512. Perfectly reasonable. Yeah, for 100 bucks. Yeah. And the build quality on that, it's plastic, which kind of sucks. So I guess sort of it comes down to me to two choices. If you want to just save some money, if you want to just kind of get into this, especially if you're not really sure that you're going to want to spend a ton of time, the Pocket Go seems like a perfectly reasonable option. You're not going to be able to play the higher end games. It's more of a Game Boy yes. emulator. The Super Nintendo, uh, it was running a little choppy. I'm, Super I, Nintendo's eh. not, that's not the one to get it for. Game yes. Boy Advance ironically runs the best on that yep. device. Unfortunately, it's hard to get running, mm -hmm. which is another downside, I think. You have to install custom firmware. Yeah. You gotta go find the ROMs yourself at that point. It's sometimes they don't work, but once you get into a Game Boy Advance game, that one runs them the best. Yeah. And that was the whole reason I initially bought it. Well, you're saving some money and you spend a little bit of time yes. in exchange. Whereas with the Amber Nick, you're getting something which is more powerful, obviously bigger, a little bit more bulky, but it has a lot more functionality. You've got USB-C, which I'm a big fan of. Right. And you also have something which to me is a much more well-rounded package at nearly $100, depending yes. on where you get it. You got a Pocket PS1 and a Pocket Game Boy Advance that runs both versions perfectly. Yeah. You can't get that on a lot of other devices. Yeah. The community around these things is massive, especially with the RG350. The technology evolves really quick. Like the Pocket Go 2 right now is the one everyone wants, but no one wants to order it directly from China. So yeah. everyone's just kind of waiting for it to show up on Amazon. But there is a huge community of people in China who are making these things themselves. Yeah. They're using a lot of Android phone parts. So I feel like in the future, you're gonna be seeing a lot 
more Android devices oh, instead of straight Linux. If you're recycling an old Android phone, especially if it has like a busted screen or something, and you're pulling out the right. main board, you have a lot more power available. Because right. even something like this, which is pretty good for an emulator, is nowhere near as powerful as a modern phone such as the Galaxy Z Flip, which I just so helpelessly have provided here. Look at that. <laughs> you already have it running. That's awesome. I already have it. It's so cool. So Austin's got his pocket Game Boy Advance SP. Sorry, I can hear you over over Pokemon. <sighs> Come on, look how cool that is. The thing that I lose with this is buttons. I I know. Fine. I know. Try it. Try it. So in no way am I recommending spending fourteen hundred dollars on a Z Flip, but I have one, and I put a Game Boy emulator, and it feels exactly like a Game Boy Advance SP. It does. It feels really good. So you've got haptic feedback set up on the yep. buttons, which. If you're gonna use touchscreen buttons, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, for your phone, getting this set up, I feel like it'd be pretty easy. Yeah. The difference is if you get an Android emulator from China, people are taking the buttons from PS Vita's and putting those in there. So you've got the triggers, you've got the analog oh. sticks. And I've seen some of them, they just look like this, like a v, like a Vita shape, but they have a earpiece here and a microphone here so you can call. They have dual SIM slots. You can use them like a phone. You, you can need to give me a Vita. photo of that. I can't even imagine. It's ridiculous, dude. It, and it's all really a couple guys who are making these things. Yeah. Like, this is my new device. And everyone kind of flocks to it in China. The, there's one of these you can get that's all aluminum, the Ambernick RG350. That's so cool. So yeah. essentially what these guys are doing is essentially they're recycling, right? Yes. So you're taking old phones that might just be tossed. You're pulling parts out of that. You may be taking old Vitas that might be tossed, pulling right. buttons and stuff out of it. And you're combining it into a new emulator. You know what? We're saving the environment yes. one emulation station at a time. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this episode of This Is. Make sure to subscribe. You also should go subscribe to Jimmy because he doesn't yeah. make videos like this at all on his channel, but he probably should. <laughs> you just switched my whole channel? Yeah. <laughs> you know, no more Halloween movie stuff, no more horror movies. No. We're just going to talk about emulating machines that kind of run games well. Sometimes. No one, no one likes movies, Jimmy. Everyone likes gaming. I mean, that's true.